Good morning, and welcome to this service of, of all the community. Isn't it great to be back? I don't know about you, but I've been looking forward to us reopening again. Uh, just a few notices. Uh, there's tracks and CDs available at the back. Please take them. We've got about 100 of each. Uh, they're not for us, to, for us to look at if we want to do, but to give away as well. Uh, fortunately, we can't invite people to carol services this year like we normally would do. So there's a carol, there's carols on here, there's a little talk by uh, Roger Carswell, and there's a track that goes with it as well. So that's great stuff and something we can just give away quite easily. Uh, big thank you to everybody who's been decorating trees, bringing trees, doing the advent wreath and decorating the church in general. Uh, just a big thank you for all of that. That's all goes on behind the scenes and we, we often don't realise who's done it, but thank you to all those who, who've been doing that. Great to see that the music group are back with us and uh, in a reduced format, but they're back with us. It's good to have them with us. They're doing a, a song with us today. Uh, the collection, if you want to give to the work of the church, there's a basket at the back. We won't be going around with a basket, uh, just drop it in the basket at the back. And some news about St. Paul's Church. I know a lot of you have been praying about St. Paul's where they've been without a minister for well over two years. Uh, Robin Ham is going to be the new minister at St. Paul's and St. Paul's and Grace Church are going to merge into, into one church. Uh, I'm not sure when he's going to be licensed yet, but uh, they're announcing it in the churches today, so we've got, we got it hot off the press. Uh, so do be praying for Robin and, and Zoe and the kids as they move, but also pray for them two churches and two fellowships as they come together and form one, one big family up there at St. Paul's. It's great for them. Let me pray for us as we begin. Loving Father God, we, we do thank you for the life of Julie's dad, and we thank you for the confidence we have that through his faith in you, that he has everlasting life. And Lord, we, as we meet together as brothers and sisters in Christ today, we thank you that that's the hope that's within us. Lord, we thank you that Jesus loved us so much that he gave himself on that cross for us over 2,000 years ago. As we come into this Advent time, it's that time as we we look back at the birth of Jesus, but we also look forward to him coming again to take us home. And that's the theme of these, these CDs and these tracks about home. And our real home, our ultimate home, is with Jesus in heaven forever. And so, Lord, help us to keep our focus on that eternal perspective, knowing that our future, as painful as it might be now, is with you in a new, perfect, in new world where there'll be no more sadness, no more pain, no more mourning, no more ambulances, no more doctors, no more strife. But we can see you face to face. So Lord, we want to celebrate you, we want to worship you, and we thank you that we can be open again to do that this morning. In Jesus' name. Amen. Well, we're going to say these words of preparation together. Yep, yeah, it's on there. So let's say these words together. We have come together in the name of Christ to offer our prayers and thanksgiving, to hear and receive God's holy word, to pray for the needs of the world, and to seek the forgiveness of our sins, that by the power of the Holy Spirit, we may give ourselves to the service of God. I've just said it's, it's Advent. Uh, our Mrs. Warden's going to come up and light our candles. Uh, but let me begin with these words. Light and peace in Jesus Christ, our Lord. Thanks be to God. I can't tell whether it's up there or not. Let me see. So today is the second Sunday of Advent, and we'll light the candle of peace. Last Sunday, we lit the first candle in our Advent wreath and celebrated the patriarchs this first candle reminded us of our hope in Christ. We light it again as we remember our Saviour. Born a king in the line of King David, Jesus was born in Bethlehem, and we believe that he will come again to fulfill all of God's promises to us, to rule the world wisely, and to bless all nations. And today we light the second candle of Advent, the candle of peace. We remember the prophets of Christ, of our Saviour would be born, a king in the line of David. The prophet Isaiah called Christ the Prince of Peace. 
He told us how he would rule the world wisely and bless all nations. When Jesus came, he taught people the importance of being peacemakers. He said that those who make peace shall be called the children of God. When Christ comes to us, he brings us peace and will bring everlasting peace when he comes again. So we light the candle of peace to remind us that Jesus is the Prince of Peace and that through him, peace is found. Peace is like a light shining in a dark place. As we look at this candle, we celebrate the peace we find in Jesus Christ. Let's pray together. Lord Jesus, light of the world, the prophet said you would bring us peace and save your people from trouble. Give peace in our hearts at Christmas tide. We ask that as we wait for you to come again, that you would remain present with us. Help us today and every day to worship you, to hear your word, and to do your will by sharing your peace with each other. We ask it in the name of the one who was born in Bethlehem. Amen. Now let's just have a moment or two of quiet as we come to our time of confession. Let's just think of those things we need to say sorry to God for, perhaps things done what we shouldn't have done, or things we've left undone perhaps what we should have done. Let's say together, most merciful Father, our creator and judge, we acknowledge and confess that we have sinned against you by thought, word, and deed. We have not loved you with all our heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We earnestly repent and are truly sorry for all our sins. For your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ's sake, forgive us and strengthen us to serve and obey you in lives wholly renewed by your Spirit, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, who has promised forgiveness to all who repent and have true faith in him, be merciful to us, pardon and set us free from all sins, strengthen us in his service, and bring us to eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Now the music group are going to come and sing for us. Jesus, hope for the nations. Isn't that what we need at this time? Hope for our nations.
friends, go ahead and come and lead us in our prayers of intercession. As we come to prayer, let our hearts be still. And Heavenly Father, we pour out our thoughts to you now. And you, all the areas of need and concern in our church and in our world. And Lord, we ask you to hear our prayers. Lord, we continue to pray for our government as it continues to persist in the pursuit of Brexit. May they be successful in achieving the right outcome and so bring an end to all the uncertainty for our nation and for the EU. And so, Lord, we pray in your name. Hear our prayers. Heavenly Father, we pray for our nation and the world in this time of conflict with this pandemic outbreak. We pray for all those involved in the struggle to find a cure and put an end to the virus. Give them the wisdom common sense and determination to solve the problem. May all nations work together for peace and for security to the benefit of everyone. Heavenly Father, we ask it in your name. Amen. Heavenly Father, in days when you lived on the earth, you shown compassion to the sick and the afflicted and made them whole. Bless all our doctors and nurses who are caring for the, the healing who they're working for. In our hospitals, in our nursing homes, give them sympathy and skill to tend to those who suffer in body or mind. May they restore everyone to the fullness of health. Heavenly Father, we ask it in your name. Amen. And Lord, we lift before you the homeless, the lonely, our family and friends who are feeling forgotten, isolated, for those who live on their own, they feel lost and neglected, afraid and uncertain of the future. May we always remember them and support them in their time of anxiety and fear. Lord, we ask that in your name. Amen. And Lord, we think of those who've been bereaved, and especially all through this pandemic. Lord, you spoke words of comfort to Martha and Mary in their hour of sorrow. You dried their tears of sadness from those who mourn. Look with compassion on those, all those who grieve the loss of a loved one. Enable them to know in this time of loss you are in their presence and that they may find peace and courage for the days ahead. Lord, we ask this in your name. Amen. Thank you. Julie's now going to come and read God's word to us, and then Jason's going to come and preach to us. The reading is Mark 1, 1 to 8. Glory to Christ our Saviour. John the Baptist prepares the way. The beginning of the gospel about Jesus Christ, the Son of God. It is written in Isaiah the prophet. I will send my messenger ahead of you who will prepare your way, a voice of one calling in the desert, prepare the way for the Lord, make straight paths for him. And so John came, baptising in the desert region and preaching a baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sins. The whole Judean countryside and all the people of Jerusalem went out to him, confessing their sins. 
They were baptised by him in the Jordan River. John wore clothing made of camel's hair with a leather belt around his waist and he ate locusts and wild honey. And this was his message. After me will come one more powerful than I, the throngs of whose sandals I am not worthy to stoop down and untie. I baptise you with water, but he will baptise you with the Holy Spirit. This is the word of the Lord. Let's pray together. Father God, thank you for your word, standing strong and true throughout history. Help us to read and understand it now. May my words speak your truth, and may our hearts and minds be receptive to your teaching, through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord. Amen. St Mark's Gospel is the shortest and probably oldest of the Gospels. It starts and ends rather more abruptly than the other Gospels. And as our church here is dedicated to St. Mark, his symbol of a lion with wings appears on our stained glass window behind me. And I'll ask Alan to uh, put a picture of that in for the uh, YouTube stream later. And as you can see, the lion has his paw on a book which starts with the opening words of the reading today. The beginning of the gospel of Jesus Christ, the Son of God. As such, this is the first ever example of a new form of literature, a gospel. Neither history nor biography. This book is thought to be the recorded teaching of the apostles as they proclaimed the good news of Jesus right across the Roman Empire and led Jesus' church as it grew. So Mark starts off with his manifesto. His gospel is about Jesus Christ, the Son of God. There are some very big claims right in those first words. Mark affirms that Jesus is Christ, God's anointed one, Messiah, King, Saviour, and he's the Son of God, the only Son of God. That's his manifesto. The rest of his gospel is going to provide the evidence to support those claims. So the first evidence is from the Old Testament, the books of the prophets that point forward to Jesus in so many ways. But here at the start, Mark is quoting from Malachi chapter 3 and Isaiah chapter 40 to show that both the coming of Jesus and the fact that he was heralded 
by John the Baptist were both foretold by the prophets and they were ordained and planned by God. Both of the passages from which these sentences are taken look forward to the time when God would come with a mission to save his people and make them holy. And as we know, that is indeed Jesus' mission. And again, these passages make clear that the one coming after the messenger is the Lord. God is coming himself to save his people. So here we are, we're only a few sentences in to Mark's gospel and already he's making good on that promise to deliver the evidence that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. Now Malachi goes on after the sentence quoted to describe Jesus, we now know, as being like a refiner's fire. Everyone heard that one. But it also describes him as a launderer's soap. And both fire and rough scrubbing are used to purify and clean something. But the process of being purified and cleaned is not particularly pleasant. Having the impurities burned away and the dirt scrubbed off can be painful, especially if we are overly attached to those impurities and dirt that Jesus needs to take away. Yet the painful process yields something better at the end. Now, when I was a small boy, I didn't like having my face washed. So whenever my mother finally managed to get hold of me and give me a good scrub with a soapy face cloth, she always exclaimed that there was a lovely little boy under all that dirt. And so it's so often like that with us and with Jesus, that he longs to make us clean but actually we kind of like being dirty and we don't like being scrubbed. And Malachi also goes on to say that Elijah will come before the promised Messiah, the Christ. So how can we spot Elijah? Well, if we look in Zechariah, which is the book before Malachi in the Bible, Prophets are described as having garments made of hair. And Elijah himself is described in 2 Kings chapter 1 as wearing a garment made of hair and a leather belt. So here is John the Baptist in the desert wearing clothes made of camel hair bound with a leather belt. So John is attesting by word and deed and lifestyle that he is the messenger sent ahead of the coming of the Lord. And John presents the people of Israel with a choice. Repent and be baptized in preparation for the coming of God's Messiah? Or just ignore it and carry on? Baptism and ritual washing was not a new concept in the Jewish religion, in Judaism. And it was used as part of a number of purification ceremonies, especially when someone was a new convert to Judaism. But notice that John here is proclaiming that everyone needs to confess and repent of their sins and be baptized in token of this. 
when under Jewish law, that wasn't needed. Again, this is part of the job description for John in Malachi, to call God's people to holiness. And like the people of Israel at that time, we too face a choice as to how we react to John the Baptist's teaching that Jesus is coming. At this Advent time of year, he calls us to prepare for the coming of Jesus that we will celebrate on Christmas Day. So, how should we go about doing this? Should we be rushing around, buying presents, sending cards, preparing food and decorating our homes with trees and tinsel? Nothing wrong with this. But in doing these things, are we preparing to welcome Jesus? Or is this more akin to preparing to welcome a visit from Santa Claus? Now the choice we make as we prepare to meet with Jesus, both as we celebrate his coming to our world on Christmas Day, and as in due time we stand before his throne on the last day, our choice is the same as those who heard of John the Baptist calling in the desert. We can ignore him and carry on as we are. Or we can confess our sins to him, repent of them, which means that we turn away from, away from them and resolve not to be that way anymore. And we come for baptism. But now we have Jesus to baptize us, not John. Jesus baptizes with the Holy Spirit, a cleansing and purifying fire and a harsh soap. By our own efforts, we cannot purify and clean ourselves, but Jesus can. If you've read the Narnia Chronicles by C.S. Lewis, you may recall that there's a character called Eustace who, because of his selfishness, he was turned into a dragon at one point. And try as he might, he could not strip off his dragon skin to make himself human again. And this is what happens to us if we try to put ourselves right. We can confess, repent, dunk ourselves in water as much as we like. Nothing much changes. But then Eustace is helped by Aslan the lion. Spoiler alert. Aslan the lion is an allegory for Jesus. Sorry if I've spoiled it. So, Aslan, Jesus, scratches Eustace so deeply with his lion claws that the dragon skin comes off at last. And so it is with us. When we repent, we need to ask Jesus to come into our lives as Lord and Saviour and for his Holy Spirit to purify us and keep us turned away from our sinful ways. If you've never asked Jesus and the Holy Spirit to come into your life in this way, or if you have, but feel like you've slid backwards since then, then maybe this Advent and Christmas is the time to do it. I'm going to pray a prayer in a few moments, and if you wish to, please pray it with me. And then make sure that you talk to someone else who can pray with you and for you in the coming days and weeks. So as I say, this passage gives us two choices, to be like the crowds who stayed in town 
and just ignore the message of John the Baptist, or to be like those who went out to hear and respond to him. But for those whom Jesus has baptized in the Holy Spirit, there is also a third choice in this passage. We can be like John the Baptist. We can proclaim the coming of Jesus. Who do you know who needs to hear that message this Christmas? Pray for Jesus to guide you who you should reach out to and how to do it. Perhaps the Home for Christmas CDs and tracts could help. Please take them. Please take more if you need them. Let's pray. Lord Jesus, thank you for coming to this earth to be our saviour. As foretold by Isaiah, Malachi and John the Baptist and recorded by Mark. We ask you to help us prepare the way for you during this time of Advent. We confess our sins to you. We turn away from our sins and towards you. We ask you to send us your Holy Spirit to purify us and to cleanse us so that we can live new lives that glorify you. And we ask you to guide us to those who need to hear your good news. Please give us the opportunities, the words, and the courage that we need to proclaim your love to each person we meet. For the glory of your name. Amen. Thanks, Jason. I remember hearing a sermon many years ago where somebody was talking about John the Baptist and saying he was more like a street sign than a weather vane. Because the world can blow us about like a weather vane and we can go all over the place. But John the Baptist just pointed directly to Jesus and never wavered from one side to the other. We have a great God who loves us and gave himself for us. And that's what we remember as we come around this table, that he gave his body and his blood shed for us so that we could be right with a holy God forever. Christ is our peace. He has reconciled us to God in one body by the cross. We meet in his name. The peace of the Lord be always with you. Let's have a, I know we can't all go and move around like we normally would do, but wish each other well. It's like when you're on a Zoom meeting, you're all wave like that at the end. It's funny. Very strange times. I just love that then as I was just thinking, of, I'd love to be singing that song. And then it says in the song in it, my heart will sing, my heart will sing. How great is our God. Let's sing from our hearts as we come around this table. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them. So let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give thanks indeed right to praise you father lord of all creation in your love you made us for yourself when we turned away you didn't reject us but came to meet us in your son you embraced us as your children and welcomed us to sit and eat with you 
In Christ, you shared our life that we might live in him and he in us. He opened his arms of love upon the cross and made for all the perfect sacrifice for sin. On the night that he was betrayed at supper with his friends, he took bread and he gave you thanks. He broke it and he gave it to them saying, take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Father, we do this in remembrance of him. His body is the bread of life. At the end of supper, taking the cup of wine, he gave you thanks and said, drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in remembrance of me. Father, we do this in remembrance of him. His blood is shed for all. And as we proclaim his death and celebrate his rising in glory, send your Holy Spirit that this bread and this wine may be to us the body and blood of your dear Son. As we eat and drink these holy gifts, make us one in Christ, our risen Lord. So with your whole church throughout the world, we offer you this sacrifice of praise and lift our voice to join the eternal song of heaven saying, Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory, Hosanna in the highest. So let us pray with confidence as our Saviour has taught us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. Though we are many, we are one body because we all share in one bread. So, brothers and sisters, draw near with faith. Receive the body of our Lord Jesus Christ, which he gave for you, and his blood, which he shed for you. Eat in remembrance that he died for you, and feed them in your hearts by faith, with thanksgiving. Let's say it together. Most merciful Lord, your love compels us to come in. Our hands are unclean, our hearts unprepared. We were not fit even to eat the crumbs from under your table. But you, Lord, are the God of our salvation, and share your bread with sinners. So cleanse and feed us with the precious body and blood of your Son, that he may live in us and we in him, and that we with the all company of Christ may sit and eat in your kingdom. Amen. I'll be bringing uh, the bread round to you. If you don't want to receive the bread, then just keep your hands by your side, and that's fine.
we recite together the prayer after communion. Almighty God, we thank you for feeding us with the body and blood of your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him we offer you our souls and bodies to be a living sacrifice. Send us out in the power of your Spirit to live and work to your praise and glory. Amen. Oh, may the Lord bless us and watch over us. May the Lord make his face shine upon us and be gracious to us. May the Lord look kindly on us and give us his peace and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among us and remain with us always. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord.